Hello, this is Jem from Elevate Code, and in this tutorial we're picking up from our last tutorial. You may find it useful to watch that video first. In this tutorial we will be adding a combo box to our property grid and also tying an open file dialog box to the property grid so that we can browse for an image. Now to add the combo box to the property grid we will need to create a class for the combo box. Right click on the project name in the Solution Explorer and click on Add Class. Now we're going to make this a combo box with dog names in it, so let's name the class dog names. Now we need this class to inherit system.componentModel.stringConverter class so that we can override some functions. The first function we will override is the getStandardValues function. Then we will override the getStandardValues supported function. Lastly, we will override the getStandardValuesExclusive function. The function getStandardValuesExclusive is a boolean that lets us control if we want the user to be only able to choose from the available options or if we want them to also be able to type in their own answer. In this case, we only want them to use the dog names that we list available, so we're going to set this to true. Now, we're going to change the getStandardValuesSupported functions to return true so that the getStandardValues function above it can actually work. Now we're going to create a function that will allow us to add items to the combo box since we can't directly do this elsewhere. We will create my list as a collections.ilist, then we will dim collect dog name list as a new collection, and we'll just add a few dog names to the collection. We'll have this function just return the collection of dog names. Next, we'll override the get standard values collection and have it return a new standard values collection. We'll pass in the list function that we have just created. Now we'll go back to the properties class and make a new property called dog name. This is going to be the property that uses our combo box. We'll change the private variable to m underscore dog name to signify that it is a member variable and change the public property name to dog name. We'll move the member variable up to the top of the class for readability with the rest of the member variables. Now, we'll give this property some attributes. We'll use the type converter attribute and get the type of the class dog names. We'll put this property in the pets category and give it the description select your dog's name from the list. Now, when we run the program, you can see that we have a drop down list with the dog's names in it. In the next part of the video, we will tie an open file dialog to the property grid. Again, we will add a new class to the project and name it class image file name. We will inherit system.drawing.design.ui type editor. Allow me to explain. In our final product, when you type in the boxes to the right of the property names in this area, it's simply a text box. Obviously, if it's a read only property, you can't actually type there, but otherwise, it's a very simple text box. Now, by inheriting the UI type editor class, we'll be able to basically add this little box with three dots in it to the end of the text box that will allow us to open up the open file dialog. Returning back to our code, we will create a new open file dialog box to work with. This example would also work with a save file dialog, but we'll stick to this for now. Next, we will override the edit value function. We need to check that the arguments being passed into this function are not nothing before we work with them. Again, with the next statement, we're checking that the value object is not nothing before setting the open file dialog dot file name to the value argument that is passed into this function. Now we'll set some of the properties of the open file dialog. We'll set show read only as false. We'll set the title to select the image file. We'll set the validate name flag to true and the check file exists to true. We'll filter the results to show only pictures that are in the bitmap and JPEG format. We'll tell it to show the dialog. And we'll set the value argument equal to whatever file is selected in the open file dialog. And we'll just tell the function to return this value as a string. Now we will also override the getEditStyle function. We will again check that the arguments being passed into it are not nothing. If this is the case, we will return system.drawing.design.uiTypeEditorEditStyle.modal. This ensures that the user cannot go back to the property grid until they close out of the open file dialog. 
We will then return the MyBase.getEditStyle context, which basically means that whatever the original function was will be used. Now we will go back to the Properties class and create a property that will use this class that we just created. We will use the property snippet and rename the private variable to m underscore dog image and then rename the property to dog image. Again, we will move the member variable to the top of the class with the other member variables for readability. Now we will add attributes. We'll set the editor attribute to the type class image file and then get the type attribute to system.drawing.design.ui type editor. We'll set the default value of the box to nothing to make sure it's cleared each time. We'll also put this in the pets category and give it the description select the image for your dog and the display name dog image so that there's a space between the words. Now you can see how you can browse for a file with the open file dialog and then the file path is put into the property grid.